Arabic word azwaj meaning pair, saying that the plants have got sexes, male and female. In the field of zoology, the Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 38, it is he who has made every animal that walks on the earth and every bird that flies in the air to live in communities like the human beings. Today science agrees that even the animals and the birds live in community like the human being which was not known earlier. The Quran speaks about the lifestyle of the bee in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 68 and 69. The Quran speaks about the lifestyle of the spider in Surah Ankabud, chapter number 29, verse number 41. The Quran speaks about the lifestyle and the communication of ants in Surah Namal, chapter number 27, verse number 17 and 18. In the field of medicine, the Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 68 and 69, that from the belly of the bee, we give you a drink of varying colors in which there is healing for mankind. It is recently we have come to know that the honey that we have is obtained from the belly of the bee. And today science agrees that there are mild antiseptic properties in honey and it is even a healing for mankind. In the field of physiology, the Quran describes the blood circulation and the production of milk in a nutshell in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse number 66. 600 years after the Quran was revealed, Ibn Nafis, he made it known to the world about the production of milk and blood circulation. 400 years later, that is 1000 years after the Quran was revealed, William Harvey, he made it famous to the Western world. In our textbook, we hear about William Harvey, but we hardly hear about the name of Ibn Nafis who 400 years before William Harvey spoke about the blood circulation and the production of milk. In the field of embryology, the Quran describes the various embryological stages of the human development in great detail in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14. It says that the human we were nutfa, then we made it into an alaka, a mudga, a zaman, that human being is created from a minute quantity of fluid. Then it made it into alaka, that is a leech-like substance. Then made it into a chewed-like lump. Then made it into bones. Then clothed the bones with flesh. When this verse was showed in the early part of the 1980s to you know, Dr. Keith Moore, who at that time happened to be the highest authority in the field of anatomy and embryology, he was the head of the department of Toronto in the University of Toronto. He said that the description of the Quran is far superior to what modern embryology describes today instead of stage one, two, three. And he said that it's not possible that any human being can mention these things in the Quran. This Quran has to be the word from Almighty God and he has no objection in accepting Prophet Muhammad as the messenger of Almighty God. Time does not permit me to speak a lot about science. I'll just give one more example which is mentioned in the Quran. The Quran mentions in Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number three and four, that when the unbelievers say that how will Almighty God be able to reconstruct our bones? After we are dead, we are buried, our bones have got disintegrated. On the day of judgment, how will Almighty God be able to reconstruct our bone? Almighty God replies in the Quran and says, tell them, Almighty God can not only reconstruct the bones, he can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of the finger. What does Quran mean by saying God can not only reconstruct the bones, he can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of the finger. It was in 1880 that Sir Francis Gold he discovered the fingerprinting method and he said that no two fingerprints even in millions of people identical and today this fingerprinting method is used by the police to identify the criminal, it's used by CIA, by FBI, by the police worldwide, this Quran mentions 1400 years ago. Francis Bacon, a very famous philosopher, he said, little knowledge of science makes a person an atheist, but in-depth knowledge of science makes a person a believer in God. That is the reason today scientists are not eliminating God, they are eliminating models of God. 
La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. I started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran from Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 13, which says, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakin wa unsa wa ja'alnaakum shu'umba wa qaba ila li ta'rafu inna karamu inda la yadkakum inna la alimun kabir, which means, O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female, and have divided you into nations and tribes, so that you shall recognize each other, not that you shall despise each other. And the most honored in the sight of Almighty God is the person who has taqwa. The criteria for judgment in the sight of Almighty God, it's not sex, it's not color, it's not wealth, it's not age, but it is taqwa, it is God consciousness, it's piety, it is righteousness. The only way one human being can be superior to the other human being is by righteousness and by piety and no other criteria. Quran says in Surah Room, chapter number 30, verse number 22. Amongst the signs, he has created the heavens and the earth, and the variation in your languages and color. These are signs for the people who understand. The Quran says he has created the different variation in the color and the languages so that those who are knowledgeable people, they will know it's a sign from Almighty God. This speaks about the universal brotherhood. The Almighty God has created all the human beings from a common pair of human beings, Adam and Eve. May peace be upon them. And Almighty God says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 70, And we have honored the children of Adam. Almighty God says in the Quran that all the children of Adam, irrespective whether they're black or white, male or female, whether they're born in UK or India or USA, whichever part of the world they belong to. Almighty God has honored all the children of Adam, all the human beings. And Islam does not only speak about universal brotherhood, it practically demonstrates that every Muslim who follows the religion of Islam should practically practice it minimum five times in the day. I'm talking about one of the pillars of Islam, that is Salah, which is the prayer. And a beloved prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him, said that when you stand for prayer, you should stand shoulder to shoulder. Irrespective whether the person standing next to you is black or white, rich or poor, king or pauper. When you stand for prayer, you have to stand shoulder to shoulder. This demonstrates the universal brotherhood every day, minimum five times every day. And another example is Hajj which is one of the pillars of Islam, that every rich person who has the means and who has the health to travel to Mecca for the pilgrimage should at least do it once in his lifetime. And Hajj is the biggest annual gathering in the world where about 3 to 4 million people from different parts of the world, from USA, from Canada, from UK, from India, from Malaysia, from different parts of the world, they gather together in one place in Mecca and Arafat and they are dressed in two pieces of unsewn cloth which is white in color. And all of them, you cannot identify the person standing next to you as king or a pauper. And all of them come on a common statement. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Here we are, oh my Lord, here we are at your service. Islam practically demonstrates universal brotherhood. Many religions believe that humankind have been created from a single pair of Adam and Eve. May peace be upon them both. But there are some religion who put the blame only on Eve for the downfall of humanity, for the origin of sin. But if you read the Quran, the blame for disobeying Almighty God is equally put on both Adam and Eve. May peace be upon them. The Quran says in Surah Araf chapter 7, verse number 19 to 27, Adam and Eve, peace be upon them, they are both addressed more than a dozen times. Both of them, they disobeyed God. Both of them repented and both were forgiven. The blame is equally put on both of them. Never is, there is not a single verse in the Quran which put the blame only on Eve. However, there's one verse in the Quran in Surah Taha, chapter 20, verse 121, which says, and singles out Adam, peace be upon him, and says he disobeyed God. But on the whole, if you read the Quran, the blame is equally put on both of them. There are some religions who, because 
they say that women is the cause of the downfall of humanity, which Islam doesn't agree. Some religions say because of that, God punished her. And pregnancy is a curse and punishment of God on the woman. But in Islam, pregnancy uplifts the woman. The Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 1, respect the womb that bore you. The Quran says in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 14, we have enjoined on the human beings to be kind to the parents. In travel upon travel did the mother bore them, and in years twain was the weaning. The Quran repeats the message in Surah Aqaf, chapter number 46, verse number 15. We have enjoined on the human beings to be good to the parents. In pain did the mother bear them, and in pain did she give them birth. So pregnancy uplifts the woman, does not degrade her. And a beloved prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari is one of the collections of the authentic sayings of the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 8, in the book of manners, chapter number 2, hadith number 2. A man approaches the prophet and asks him that who deserves the maximum companionship and love in this world. The prophet said, your mother. The man asked after that who? The prophet repeated, your mother. The man asked after that who? Again the prophet said your mother. The man asked for the fourth time after that who? Then the prophet said your father. That means 75%, three-fourths of the companionship goes to the mother, 25%, one-fourth goes to the father. In short, the mother gets the gold medal, she gets the silver medal, as well as the bronze medal. The father has to be satisfied with the mere consolation prize. These are the teachings of Islam which we have to agree. And if we analyze, Islam gave economic rights to women 1300 years before the Western world. 1400 years ago, Islam gave right to any adult Muslim woman to own or disown the property without the permission of anyone else. The first time the Western world gave right for a woman to own or disown property was in 1870s under the Married Property, Married Woman Property Act, which said that a married woman, adult, can own or disown the property without the permission of the husband. And this act was later revised later on. Islam gave economic rights to women 1300 years before the Western world. And in Islam, we do not agree with the word housewife, which is used in English language, because we don't consider the woman to be married to the house, to be called a housewife. We prefer calling her as homemaker, the person who makes the home, the person who builds the home. Though we see that there are many misconceptions, we find, and many people think that men and women in Islam are not equal. In fact, in Islam, men and women are equal. But equality does not mean identicality. They're equal, but they are not identical. Depending upon their physiological makeup, their psychological makeup, their biological makeup, they have different roles. Overall, men and women are equal in some aspects. The woman, she may have a degree of advantage. In some aspects, the men may have a degree of advantage. Let me give you an example. If there are two students in a class, student A and B, both of them, they come out first in examination. Both get 80 out of 100. When we analyze the answer sheet, the 10 questions, which have 10 answers, each carrying 10 marks. In answer to question number one, so then A gets 9 out of 10. So then B gets 9 out of 10. In answer to question number two, so then B gets 9 out of 10, and so then A, he gets 7 out of 10. In all the remaining eight answers, both get 8 out of 10. If we add up, both get 80 out of 100, they're equal. But in answer number one, the student A has a degree of advantage. In answer number two, student B has a degree of advantage. In the other aspects, both are equal. And overall also they're equal. In the same way, men and women in Islam are equal. In some aspects, the men have a degree of advantage. In some aspects, the women have a degree of, degree of advantage. For example, if a robber, if a thief, enters my house. I will not say I believe in uh, woman liberalization. I will not ask my wife or my daughter to go and fight. 